and as usual. Stay triggered. Pew pew. Pew. Welcome back to Veracity Trigger, where strategies are so good, it'll make angels cry. I believe. And I believe you do too. But anywho, let's uh, get into part two here. Let's talk about this. And so what are we doing here today? We are just setting up our organized phase. This is for this is for beginners, players. So I hope that you can spread the word and help other people get to see this as well. This is going to help you learn how to play the game effectively at a starting position. From there on, I will help make more videos, but this is just for the beginner mode. So if you're an expert level coming in here and telling me you gotta do it like, hold your horses. Let me get through this, okay? All right, so what do you wanna do here? Well, essentially you wanna set up knights and you wanna move them around. And if I didn't explain it well enough the last time, what I wanna say is you want three knights because you can only field three knights at a castle. You can do more than that, but you really just need three knights at each castle to feel to move into another castle to take it over. So what you want with that is, I would say from a beginner perspective, playing on be beginner mode or normal mode, whichever one you want to play, uh, you want a tank, you want a ranged mage, mage or archer, and you want a healer on your team. If you can't do that, try to try to find a way to make it work, right? So if you don't have a healer, use an extra knight that has heals or something like that. I, you know what I'm saying. So anyways, we got three knights moving over here, right? So, you know, let's go ahead and um, see what they got, see what we can fill up. So what we're doing here, since we're moving a couple knights over here and, you know, he's got all this stuff. What I typically do, and this might help you out a lot too, is I like to organize the numbers. So you're looking at all these numbers here. What does this mean? What, is, what does that mean? What does all this stuff mean? I don't know what it means. It doesn't mean, it doesn't mean anything to me. Well, it does mean a whole lot, actually. So this number here is a breakdown of how much rune you get. And each knight is going to grow differently with rune. But some knights are going to grow as project knights so much better than your well-established knights that you start with. So you might want some little characters to uh, to feel them a lot more so that their rune grows higher, their hit points grow higher, their MP grows higher, MP, everything can grow higher. Uh, you can basically check out that stat when you look here, and without my head in the way, you can see this command range here, which is pretty good, but this is what you want them to look for. Character growth, that's all your stats with your character. It's at a D, so as in you know grade school, that's not that great. D barely passes, uh, but for rune growth, which is what we were just pointing at before, now that's good. So he can grow rune-wise to get more rune, and what rune does is rune just really holds on to monsters. Rune is your ability to hold more monsters of higher quality or just more in general. So we have 31 left because it says 31 left and it's really a calculation of that number that's highlighted right up there. So we have 31 rune that's left. So let's go find a uh, monster that's 30, which we don't, which this one says costs 35. So, you know, right here is the number we want to check out. So that's kind of what you want to look for with that. So we can't do it, so we're not going to worry about it. Uh, we can get into micromanaging later on. I love to organize, and I will show you how to do that efficiently. But for right now, we cannot do that. So what else can we do? All right, let's um, see. Well, she has 147 rune. Now in this game, that's how much she's grown, grown up to. But monsters in this game only go only end in zeros and fives. So just think about the the, multiplic the multiplication of five, right? So we can only do 145. So let's look for 145 points worth of rune for monsters. Now, if you're like, I'm bad at math, that's fine. Just do one at a time or two at a time until you figure it out. But let me see if I can calculate this in my head. So we got uh, 75 and 40. Well, if we did 30, with 75, then that would be 105, but with the 40, that'd be 115. So we could do uh, a dragon and a lizard man. Okay, so dragon's a t uh, full on tank, lizard man's a little tiny tank, you know, a tiny Tim tank or whatever you want to call it. I usually call them tiny tanks because, you know, they're not really the best at frontlining, but, you know, they, they try. They do their best. 
And so, you know, we're left with that. Now, I know it's not the most optimal, but at least we have some guys here for a team, right? Okay, so let's look at who's coming over here. And I think Muwa was coming over here. She's got 72 left. Who are we not really using at this moment? Uh, well, we're not using Darius from what I remember, so we'll put this big tanky thing on Muwa's team. And now he's done. Okay, so we got that team up there. It's going to be set to move. We got uh, this team over here. We have to try to figure out. So we got 32 points there. We got 40 points there, 60 points here. Uh, you can play with moving things around until you get it just right. Let me see if this fits. Well, that kind of fits a little better, sort of. Okay, that's. I'll just go with this. We'll just work with this. Yeah, there's 18 points left, but we got 77 points. So what can we fit with 77? Well, really just anything with 75 or 70. So we can either do two of these elementals or we can do a tank, which these these guys are now tanks. So we're gonna get a Mandrake. I'd love to get a snake. I like snakes a little better, but I'm really happy that these guys are actually a lot more tanky. So that kind of rounds out that team there. Roundabout from an easy mode perspective. And I think we're bringing Eliza over here. So let's get some stuff for Eliza. And what you can do is just take monsters from somebody else's team you're not using it right now and just give them to somebody else. You know, but, you know, there's there's no reason to cry about it. You know, go right for it. All right, so Eliza's team is going to be set. She's moving over there. She's full up as far as we can really put her up to without super min maxing. And, um, and then we got Kane left, who is the other guy that was going over to the other place. So let's give him a good monster. Hellhounds are actually really good monsters. Now you get a lot of variety of monsters here. Good, evil, uh, earth, air. Earth and air are kind of the same element, I would say. And then fire and water. Uh, so if you're thinking about Fire Emblem or other games along that line as far as like what beats what, you know, that's the kind of monsters you're going to get. So I wouldn't necessarily say focus on all the elements right now. Just just to get the basics down first and then we'll cover more later okay so we got all that set all those guys are going to move they're all filled up let's go fill up this team over here so we got 50 points here can we like perfectly do anything with that well almost so you see how i'm just playing with the numbers here i'm just moving around really i'm just looking at the last number you can look at all this stuff in the older games they just made you kind of like look at this area here but really now they make it super simplistic and they just make you look at this number. So if we're trying to figure this out, we got nine left, which is actually just, if we're thinking in Brigadine terms, zeros and fives, zero, five, zero, five. Only think about that. Only remember that. If we had a 45 monster here, then I could flip it for this 40 monster here. And then it would kind of fill that space up a little better, okay? And then we could get more points with the top to do more min-maxing. But we'll cover that later. I have to say that a bunch of times because I get plenty of comments about that. And, uh, yeah, I I hear you. I hear you, man. I know what you're talking about. But, anywho, so what do we have at the top here? We have 145 that we can work with. I know it says 148, but like I was saying, zeros, fives. That's the only numbers we can work with for filling up our slots of rune for our rune knights because they're called rune knights because they hold monsters made of rune okay i know it's over as simple as it, it is over overly simplified but that's the actual truth about what these things are and why they were called that so let's get 145 and we'll fill it up okay so what do we do with that well we could get so we can make 100 with 60 and 20 is 80. Another 20 is 100, right? So we got 60. Um, oh, we're out of room. <laughs> we don't even have enough room to do it. Oh my gosh. Okay, so we just have enough for that. We'll have to wait till next turn to summon more. But as you know, we could have gotten two uh, Gremlins, which I nicknamed Harry Fairies, uh, and then you can also get a Clay Golem. So then next turn, once we have the room, we can fill it up and kind of play with that. And so why don't we go ahead and um, execute the move so you can kind of see what this even looks like. 
All right, so we'll end the phase there. Now, don't worry about anything right off the bat. Nobody's going to attack you the first turn. They never do. It's just a rule of thumb. Um, and on easy mode, they don't really attack you very, very often. Anyway, so, you know, in easy mode, you can kind of, like, get a more relaxed version of the game and not stress out. So, let's, um, let's, let's see what they do. Okay, so there's this, um... There's a lot of dialogue. There's a lot of story. I'm um, not gonna tell you all about that. We got Sugar, who is a mage, so we can put her somewhere, right? Okay. So, all right. So we have an extra mage here, but um, we'll put her somewhere, somewhere else. But see how we got this team here? We got our tank, which Eliza can tank, but she also does have magic. She has a lot of good magic. So you can do flame spells a bunch of times. 68 MP, uh, 330, 330 MP total to use 330 MP in the tank and 68 to use it so that would mean what maybe four times to use it three to four times and so see she's your ruler another thing you have to remember though is that if your ruler which they have this little little crown symbol in front of their name if they get injured in the battle everybody retreats you lose the entire battle immediately so you have to be very careful with them um, if they can tank the front line and you're confident enough, then give it a shot. But you're never going to have any perfect battles. There's no such thing as the perfect battle. Never was, never will be. But, you know, try it out, see how it works for you, okay? Um, another thing about the rulers, this brigandine inflicts manis, manis stones grace. What does that even mean? All right, let's, um, let me show you real quick here. What it does is it prevents poison... Um, what am I drawing? Poison, Paralysis, Silence, Faint, which is Stun, Petrify, and Charm. Does all those things. It's freaking amazing. Absolutely amazing. So, alright, so that kind of covers your ruler a little bit, so you get an understanding. But we got Tank, Heal, Mage, kind of a mix. You kind of do with some frontlining, so frontline Mage in a way. That would work for that team, actually. I don't mind that. Um, and then we got our healer, which isn't the greatest healer, but he can do some heals. Plus, we have all these unicorns here, which all heal, so that's great. That's a lot of backup. Uh, we got her for our sort of pseudo mage for the background, and our frontliner, who these Temple Knights are actually really, really good now. They're a lot better than the Lancers that were in the previous games, so they're a lot better in that sense. Um, let's finish out this, um, other thing here, so we had two two pixies, which do protect spells, which will pretty much mitigate damage taken to your characters. They can also do silence too, but that barely works, so don't try to count on silence as much. Okay, so we got uh, all that. If we did our math right, should be right about there. And we are. Alright, cool. So it doesn't matter which order you put them in here, because when I press L and R, it flips any character, so... People are like, put them in the right order. It really doesn't matter in this version. It did matter in Grand Edition and Legend of Forcina, but it does not matter in Renarzia. It'll randomly flip to any new character. I, I don't know why, but it is the way it is. So we got an established team there in a sense, and we got a pretty decent team here. We could flip numbers around and try to concrete this a little better. Something like, uh, you know, 75 with 50, we could do that. And we got 57 more points to play with. So no, why don't we buy, uh, you know, why don't we buy another one, another one of these? Just have more monsters for our team. Honestly, the more, the better. The more, the merrier. The more, the higher chance you're going to win because you're just going to be able to do more damage and tank more damage. So try to fill this up as high as you can. Uh, and so what we got here is we got our wizard, we got our backline range attack guy, got our frontline tank. Um, and then we got our, we got our healer, you right? So we're pretty much set on all the parameters there that covers the organized phase. I'll go over the attack phase in a different video. I'm going to end it here. I want to thank you for coming by. I want to make sure, I want to make sure, but I hope you make sure that if you want to be subscribed to this and you want to see more of this juicy, juicy content that I can help you out with. And if you have any ideas for any other helpful videos, please leave it in the comments down below. But the very next video up is going to be the attack phase for beginners, for Brigandine. And um, we'll get into that then. 
Thanks for coming by and have a great day.